Until recently, it was really difficult to work with multiple people on one single Power BI report. That's mainly because there was no way of doing incremental changes. So, for example, if you have two people working on their own local Power BI file, and let's say they add both of them some measures and they want to bring it to the final Power BI report, then they had to manually copy those over. Now, with the latest July 2020 release, you can use a tool called the ALM Toolkit, so the Application Lifecycle Management Toolkit, and it makes code merging and deployment much easier. Now, let's have a look how that works. Now here I have a report in Power BI service where I have a whole bunch of measures for the actual sales values and units. Now let's have a look how this one looks like in the backend. So you see we have our sales table, we have a promotion table and different dimensions around it. Okay, so let's say that I then also have a local version of that file to which I made some changes. For example, I added a forecast table. I also got rid of the promotion table and here I also added a whole bunch of new measures for the forecast, okay? So here we have the actuals, which was already there, and the forecast measures. So one option that I have is to republish my Power BI report and replace the report that is in Power BI service. This could, however, take a lot of time. And then I also have to make sure that I incorporated all of the changes from my colleagues as well in the report that I'm publishing. Now, so far, this was the only way of doing it. Now, with ALM Toolkit, we can just publish the incremental changes that we have made to this report. Now, let's see how that works. Now, I can go here to External Tools and open the ALM Toolkit. Now, if you don't have this yet, then just wait until the end of the video where I explain how to install it and how to set it up correctly. So here in the ALM Toolkit, we have a source file and we have a target file. So the source file is the file on my local machine uh, where I made the updates, okay? Then I want to push those updates into the target, which is the published file in the Power BI service. It can also be another Power BI report that's on your computer, but in this case, it's in Power BI service. I'm gonna compare the two. Here we see a comparison between the source report and the target report. And when there is no change, then it says same definition and it will skip it when you update the target, okay? Now, what we are interested in is the changes that we made. So to have a clear view on the changes, we go here to select actions and we hide the skip objects, okay? So we are only left with the objects that changed. Now here we have our forecast table, which we added and it's not yet in the target. So the report that is in Power BI service. Now, when it's not there, then it will create it as soon as we run an update. Now, on the other hand, we have deleted the promotion table, which is still in the published report. And when we run an update, it will delete that report. That can also be that we just made some changes to a certain table. Like for example, in dim product, we made a change, then it will just run the update. So the default is that it will delete, create, or update. Now you can also manually say that you want to skip a certain change. So for example, here for FST forecast, we could go there and then say that it should be skipped, okay? Now in the select actions, we can hide the skip objects, okay? So all of the skipped objects will be hidden, or we can say hide skip objects with the same definition, okay? So only the ones that we are skipping that are exactly the same in the sources in the target. But here, FCT forecast, there we manually said it should be skipped, so therefore that one still shows, all right? Now, if I want to undo the skipping, then I just go here to the dropdown and then change it to create, or I go here and then say that we want to create all objects that are missing in the target, okay? And then it changes it back to create. All right, so now we actually want to update the published report. Now, before you do that, you first have to click on validate selection. So you see here we have zero warnings. However, a warning would show if I would have made a change that would have led to an error in the published Power BI report, okay? So now that we have done the validation, we can click here on update. 
So the deployment was successful. Now let's have a look in Power BI service if our report has been updated. And indeed you see that now over here we have not only actuals, but also the forecast folder with all of the forecast measures. And we also have here the forecast table that was added in our update. Now you see how much easier it makes the deployment of the changes that you make to your Power BI data sets. But in addition, it also allows for much better version control and documenting what changes you actually made. So if you click on report differences before you actually update the target file, then it generates a new Excel report with all of the differences. Now let's have a look. Now here you see the generated report. Now every time when something is deleted or created, it's highlighted in gray. And when there is just an update, you can see it also here in the status column that there were different definitions between the target and the source. Now you can also generate a script uh, where you have a file that you can also run outside of the ALM toolkit, for example, in SQL Server Management Studio. Now here on the options, we have further customization options, for example, how you want to deal with perspectives, cultures, roles, etc. So you see it's a very simple to use tool, but very powerful. Now let's see how you can set it up on your computer. Now first you have to go to the website alm-toolkit.com where you can download the ALM toolkit. Make sure that you're running the latest version. Then in Power BI you also need to make sure that you're running the latest version or at least the July 2020 version. Then if you go to File, Options and Settings, Options, we need to go to Preview Features and then make sure that Store Data Sets Using Enhanced Metadata format is enabled. Now by enabling this feature, the metadata is stored in a different way and similar to analysis services tabular models and not specific anymore for Power BI desktop files and, and therefore it op also opens up a lot of new capabilities. Now if you want to use the ALM toolkit with Power BI service, you need to have premium capacity, that's one, and you need to double check two settings. So if you follow me here to the admin portal, and then you go to capacity settings. Now I'm using Power BI Embedded. Then over here we have our resource. And then you can go to workloads. And here you need to make sure that the XML A endpoint is set to read, write. By default, it's on read only. So that's one. A second thing that you need to check is if you go to tenant settings, and then under integration settings, you have use, analyze and Excel with on-premises datasets. This needs to be enabled, otherwise you will also get an error. Now again, if you want to use the ALM toolkit, you need to have premium capacity. Uh, at the moment when you want to compare two datasets, then you also need to fill out the URL for your workspace. Now you can find this URL in Power BI service if you're in your workspace and you go to workspace settings and then to premium, then here you have the workspace connections and then you can just copy it over to the ALM toolkit. I hope this short introduction video convinced you of how helpful the ALM toolkit is for Power BI development within an organization. If you have any questions, just post them in the comment section below. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And I hope to see you in our next video.